feels like it's morning, so then I'm stuck. Um, I'm Ashley with HomeBot. It was originally um, in Title, but I switched over from Title to Brand Marketing and launched HomeBot in the state of Arizona, originally coming out of Denver, Colorado. We are about a little over a three-year-old company. The first 15 months were more of like a data um, kind of a, a testing phase, and the past basically almost two years have been in the field. Currently, right now, since I've launched HomeBot in Arizona in July, I have over 200 lenders and over 200 real estate agents using it with over 109,000 consumers receiving this report every single month from their real estate agent or their lender or a co-branded real estate agent or the lender. So if you guys have heard of uh, HomeBot, awesome. If you haven't, who has not? So we're like 50-50 in the room. Who has it? Who has heard of it and has it? Heard of it, has it, has it, has it, has it, has it. Okay, cool. So um, for the people that ha have it currently, um, some of this will be a renewal for you guys who do not have it. Um, I'm going to show you, I'm going to start off really, really simple, and I'm going to show you what an actual digest looks like. what you're looking at right now, uh, I am actually technically a lender, but it doesn't look any different if you're a real estate agent. It'll be the exact same information, but you just see that it says Wyman EG Mortgage, which is a data mortgage company. So when your clients originally get HomeBot, they will get um, exactly what this looks like. So they'll get an email, which I can show you, and then they'll click in and they'll get the digest. So the digest right here says estimated value of 864. In this case, it says re-verify. When your clients originally get this email, it'll actually say in big bold letters in a red box, it says not verified yet. And it'll have them verify it. When they click on that button, they'll be able to go through a series of questions that says too high, too low, just right. What would you like to verify? They say it's too low, why? because have you had upgrades? Yes, what upgrades have you had? And they can manually type in the upgrades they have had, which is great because your client says, I've upgraded my kitchen. What are you gonna do as a real estate agent? You're gonna call them. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited you upgraded your kitchen. Tell me all about it. If you're friends with them or close with them, can I come over? Can I come visit? I would love to do a CMA. Let's have this conversation. It's a way to create a conversation. I've had a lot of real estate agents um, really be combative with me about the value proposition because like, well, what if it's not accurate? Are my clients gonna be upset with me? We make it very, very clear that the value is just an estimated value and that they need to reach out to you as their agent to verify that value. I would say we're probably about 5% inaccurate, but think about that, 5% over the entire United States there's, a, there's gonna be a, a handful of clients that are inaccurate. If you specialize in an area where there's lots of new builds, or in an area such as like a Prescott or Flagstaff where homes are off the grid, or they're very, very custom, yeah, your value is going to be off. But you guys know that because you're a referral real estate agent and you understand the market better than your clients do. So not to get too much into that, but that's one thing, many of the questions I get asked about that value. You see this chart, as the market changes, this will automatically change. So if your client comes in and they want to re-verify, you verify it as eight, let's say 865. But as the market's changing, it will actually fluctuate with the new value you put in based upon the way the market's fluctuating. So homes sold, what's happening in the area. So recently, um, in this current area, there's been a huge fluctuation in property values and home selling. So the value has gone up tremendously in that current area and it's continuing to go up. They will get notified as the, the value is fluctuating in their area based upon the new number that you put in or based upon the number that they leave it as if they do not have an issue with the value that is being sent to them. So current, uh, right here it shows uh, what your net worth 
In this case, it basically takes, it's very, very simple, their loan value minus their loan balance, that's their net worth. How we come up with this value, again, is through Black Knight. So are you guys familiar with Black Knight? Black Knight is one of the largest data providers. Um, they are current, they're owned by Fidelity. So they, they pretty much run all of the data information because there's Black Knight, there's CoreLogic, and there's one more, Liz, do you know of it? It's called Real something. Or not very popular. Um, no. Yeah, think of it. So there's three major. Black Knight is one of the largest providers. You guys can Google Black Knight. You'll find out that they they are um, one of the largest providers for us. So currently, right here, you see current mortgage. This is not the best scenario to show you, but if this client were to have other mortgages from the past, it would show. If they have a HELOC on the property, this would show. So is as it, real estate, yes. Is it like Monson? No, no, it's a, it, they pull public record. Mm -hmm. So when you close a transaction, it goes through title, title closes, title reports, title reports to public record, Black Knight pulls that public record and gives it to us. How far back does it go? If they own the home, if they bought it in 89, they'll have all of their past records on there. It's the original records from the day that that homeowner purchased that home. Mm -hmm. Not a past homeowner, mm -hmm. but the current homeowner. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Yeah. So if this, if this, consumer or client right here own this home and they had bought it in 2010 and they had a different mortgage on it and they refinance it would show every transaction that they've ever done if they have a HELOC on the home so I don't know how many of you guys have ever gotten a listing appointment and they're like oh we only owe three hundred thousand dollars and then you pull title and title shows that they've had a HELOC and they have a HELOC that they took thirty thousand dollars on their net profit conversation changes because I would assume that when you guys go out on a listing appointment, you have that conversation, what's your net profit, this is what you need to be listed at, these are your fees, this is how much you're gonna profit. You'll be able to put their data in here and actually pull their financials before you even go on your listing appointment, which is, in my opinion, fantastic, because typically, you could pull a pre-title report or a prelim, but all you simply have to do is put in their first name, last name, and address in here, and email it to yourself to find out their actual data. As you scroll down, so this would be for your current database, it'll show them how much they pay towards principal and interest. So if your clients are running that check for $1,500 and they're not quite sure which portion is going towards principal, interest, taxes, and insurance, assuming that they're impounding them, we will let them know how much of that's going towards principal and how much of that is going towards interest. If they click on these numbers, again, we're constantly informing your clients they can click on it, we'll take them back up. This is how we use these numbers. This portion right here is educating them on what their options would be to actually refinance. If it's a 20, or I'm sorry, 15 to 20, 25 or 30, the middle will change between 20 and 25, just depending on their actual scenario. In this client's case, they have a really large history. Point, I think it's 3.5. Their option to refinance right now and they're in 5 1 arm is probably not great. However, you're still being an authoritative figure and educating them. So you're no longer selling them a home and moving on and sending them the daily newsletter with pumpkin pie recipes and where the greatest splash pad is. You're actually sending them a monthly digest and what their options are with the equity position that they have in their property. Even if they don't have equity, this portion, as we scroll down, will show them right here that they have PMI, that it'll let them know like this is what your PMI is, this is where your LTV is, and once you get to approximately 78%, this is a time to reach out and consider refinancing to get out of your PMI or contact your lender to actually get out of your PMI because you do want to partner with a lender with HomeBot. It's very important to have some sort of person that is in your team that's really closing the loop between your lender, the real estate agent, and the consumer. So when your client is in a position where they might have PMI and you're partnered with a lender, there's no questions asked. You reach out to your lender, you have that conversation, and you get it taken care of. And now you as a real estate agent have introduced them to a lender that's going to refinance them and save them $110 a month. Who are they going to look at? You. You're the person that provided them that information. Ashley, if we uh, pay for it ourselves without a, a financial participation mm -hmm. from a lender, then we have different lenders for each client? That would be solely up to you. Okay. You, you would have to provide your clients with that data. So 
let's say hypothetically um, your clients were to click on this button right here. Typically the way we would like it to look would be they would provide them with the data. This would be your financial advisor in your information right here. So it would be co-branded. When they clicked on what would my rate be, how much does it cost, or they can customize it, you and your lender will get the exact same email. At that point, you contact your lender, hey, I got this email, I got two, okay, great, let's figure this out. Why are they considering refinancing? Are they looking to save money monthly? Are they looking to refinance and pull cash out? Why do they want to pull cash out? You're really becoming like a team of advisors for your clients and helping them better understand their equity position and what to do with that. If you don't want to have a lender on there and they click this, what would my rate be? That's going to go directly to, to you. So when it goes to you, now you're going to have to decide which lender you want to reach out to. In my personal opinion, I feel like it's better to partner with your number one lender and work solely with them with your clients. But if you choose not to do that, you're, you would really, it's more, it's more of management on your behalf um, if you don't have a lender involved with you. So this portion right here, um, if I just paid 300, they can play around with this. As uh, real estate agents, I'm not sure if your clients ask you this, hey, what if I pay an extra $50 or what if I pay an extra? And quite frankly, if they were just to pay one, uh, let's see, what was I thinking on this? Okay, so let's just say they were to pay a prop, that's a little bit a lot. Um, <laughs> if they were to pay $2,000, no, what is the one scenario I'm looking for? Basically, one <coughs> year's worth of mortgage payments, one time, they could drop their mortgage down 10 years. So you, you really become, um, you really become, I, I keep saying financial advisor, but that's not the right word I'm looking for. You become the person long after they sell their home that they can go to for and advice. They're still and they're still thinking about you because every single month you're providing their financial data and you have an awesome lender that you work with that's able to answer all the great questions that they're asking. And as you scroll down, so this feature right here, this is actually really cool because you guys are one of the first to see this. This is brand new, we're just launching this to real estate agents and lenders and clients are not receiving this yet. So um, Liz, your guys' clients haven't received this say, platform yet, this. so it's really cool. Um, we have now integrated buy your dream home, rent your home, buy another home, buy an investment or sell and pocket the cash. As they go through each portion of here, we explain to them and help them better understand what their LTV should be, um, selling pocket the cash, what the actual cost could be, so the selling agent, buying agent, and the fees. Of course, we always have our disclaimer, and then we explain to them that they really need to reach out to their professionals to get um, more accurate data. And if they go to buy their dream home, they can go here, We'll give them very much just an estimate of what it could potentially be based upon the Freddie Mac national rates. Each mortgage company has their own rates as well as it's based upon their, you know, their loan to value, their debt to income ratio, and their credit score. There's a, a lot that goes into it, but we wanna give them a base idea. But let's say they go in there and they say buy your dream home. I mean, that's pretty nice, $956,000. I'm gonna, I wanna explore the market. Uh, yes. So I'm going to go in here. I'm going to explore the market. You can see I've already gone in here before. But they can go, and let's say your clients are looking in, um, give me a zip code in another state. 36345. 36345. Ooh, Alabama. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> That's where I'm from. <laughs> okay. Let's see what's happening in Alabama. Fabulous. So should we go to Webb, Newville? Let's I'm from Headland, that's where I graduated high school. All right, we'll go to Headland. So currently right now in Headland, oh, that's a funky little uh, border. <laughs> <It's very laughs> long, that's interesting. <laughs> we are across the entire United States. So if you guys um, have, let's say you're from Headland, okay? Mm -hmm. You have a real estate agent, your best friend you grew up with, she's an agent there, you're an agent here. You can share this information with all your folks from home and if they have inquiries on purchasing a home in Headland, guess what? Now you're gonna reach out to your best friend and say, hey, my person searched the zip code. I noticed that there was 10 homes in the inventory and holy cow, homes don't sell very quickly there, do they? Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, 
um, ten homes in the inventory, can we work together? And now you can start working on a referral basis with people in other states if you guys are from another state. Or if you have a client that's in another state and they're looking in Arizona, you can put him in, them in here. And let's say they are looking, their job is in Chandler, but they're just not quite sure. They're like, oh, I'm moving to Phoenix. So Phoenix would be 85032. We'll just put that in. So 85032, you put your clients in here. It's going to take them directly to Phoenix. And they're going, okay, but that's not really where I want to live or it's too much. Or I want a bigger home. Or I want a cheaper buy. Or I want a fastest move. There's different ways they can search the market. So this is great if you're helping clients move from out of state to Arizona. Or if you're helping clients move from Arizona to out of state. Um, it's great if you're partnering with a lender that's licensed in multiple states as well. Because then you can piggyback off your lender in helping your people relocate if you have connections in other states. Any questions on that? Yeah, it's very cool. Um, so we're going to go back. Another feature that is coming soon and is not live just yet. Hold on, give me one moment to go back to Jacob. Or I'm, I'm going to go to Jacob. I was looking at a different one, but we're going to go to Jacob real quick is that Jacob had multiple homes on the very top where it says your home, your market. If you have investors or any of your clients that own multiple homes, they will have all their homes listed at the top and they can toggle between their homes. So you only have to send them one digest and then they can go through their different homes in here. So what I was saying before about your clients, if they have a HELOC, we can see that he's had a previous loan in 2000. So this appears to be he bought his home in 2000 then it looks like he actually refinanced in 2003 and he took a HELOC out in 2004. So he doesn't have any balance on his HELOC right now. Um, he's got a 30 year at 6.25. So you guys as the actual real estate agent can see where financially your clients are in their home. Typically what you'd have to reach out to your title company or you'd have to reach out to your loan officer to pull this data. Now you have that data literally at your fingertips right there. So that is why it's showing that Jacob has $427,000 in equity because he has an additional $100,000 um, in his HELOC that he has not um, pulled any money out on. If he were to have that number, it would be different. So this is um, this portion right here. So right now, um, the house has the $420,000 or $427,000 in equity. These would be the different options. So it would be Great Emergency Fund, Home Improvements, Livable Space, Credit Card Debt, Student Loan, Solar Panel. However, I recently heard on the radio that Solar Panel, they're changing for 2020. The new um, tax write-offs are changing. It's, they're all, everything's all changing. But um, when they go into here and they're inquiring about solar panels, we will actually redirect them to an informational page so they can learn a little bit more about solar panels before they actually reach out to you. One of the, the parts that I love, um, I think this is really funny, and we have we only have 27 people on our team in Colorado, and they're super ridiculously smart people. And their sense of humor <coughs> sometimes is not awesome, because you need super IT smart people, like they're only like on their, they stay in their lane. And they added this, and I, it cracked me up, because they're like, oh, you're a vacation. I go, that's super awesome, but now read it. You probably should use your home to take vacation. <laughs> And they thought it was the funniest thing they could possibly add to this. And I, I think it's kind of fun too. It's, it adds a little bit of sense of humor to these people and, and helps them like think and understand that there are other options besides that. You guys may or may not find humor and I just thought it was really funny. Um, credit card debt, helping them understand that their current rate is probably lower than what their credit card um, debt is. So as a real estate agent, this is not typical conversation that you have with your clients. It isn't. I mean, and, and we want it to be. We want your clients to reach out to you and start asking these questions. We want you to be that person. Long after you sell them their home, you help walk them through <coughs> the entire life that they live in their home with their financial position that they have. Because, and like I said, it, it could lead to another transaction. It could lead to buying another property, which leads us to here. So the Airbnb and VRBO, 
in this case right here, this is pulling data about the neighborhood and what they could potentially uh, rent their home out for. So the basic versus the fancy, or the seldom amount of days versus most often. So in this neighborhood where Jacob lives right now, there hasn't been recorded a home that has rented out more than 16 days in a row for $248 a night. Does that mean that Jacob cannot rent his home out for more nights in a row or for more? No, it's just letting them know, this is the market, this is the nightly rate, this is the number of nights based upon the months per year. It educates them on how they can actually take that money, the monthly revenue and the annual revenue and reinvest it and how much interest they could save and how much they could take off the life of their loan. The cool part about this is it gets people to start to think, well, maybe I don't wanna rent out my current home, but I have equity. Maybe I'll start searching and looking for another home to potentially rent out for an Airbnb. And with being Arizona, we have our snowbirds, we have a ton of millennials, and we're a great market right now for investors. I mean, there's tons of zip codes right now that are fix and flip all day long, um, which I'll show you the actual buyer's platform of this, where any one of your potential buyers, even if they're already a homeowner in your system, and they're looking at a new property, if they're a new buyer, they can go in and they have the same module and they can put in any address in across the entire United States and find out information on the <coughs> And at the very bottom of each one of their digests, we highly suggest um, that you help your consumers use this tool. So it says, know someone who could use a home bot report for their home. Well, everyone can use a home bot report for their home. So a lot of clients don't see this, or maybe they don't think twice about it. You guys, as real estate agents, on top of having home bot as your monthly digest that you send out, which we automatically send it out for you with the updated information, you can start marketing it. You can reach out to your clients and let them know, hey, you know what? This tool I offer complimentary to anyone. At the bottom of your digest, there's a spot where you can share it with your friends and family. You can also post this on social media, meaning you as in real estate agents, not your clients. I mean, I guess your clients could too if you encourage them to, if they're really good friends of yours. We give each one of you your own PERL. PERL stands for personal URL. So we give each one of you your own page where you can share on social media anywhere from LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, um, Google Plus, your own homepage, you can add it in your email signature, you can put it on your business card, and you can have it in an open house. So if you have this on an open house and you have a looky loo like your neighbor that comes through, it's like, oh, I already, I own the house down the street. Oh, that's awesome. Do you have home bought for your house? Oh, yeah, what's that? Look, check it out. You don't even have to explain it to them. They can just watch this quick little slide and it runs through. It lets them know all the information or they can manually click through it if they are impatient. Oh, that's the key for some of you guys want more patience. They can manually go through it. All they have to do is type in their information, press get home bot, and it'll immediately um, be sent to them. What you guys can also do, because this stayed out long, <coughs> number, like, did you guys do this? Did you buy a new domain name? We did, yeah. yeah. So um, what I suggest you do is with your Pearl, because nobody wants to type in that long number, you can buy a customized, domain name. So see there where that says masonco.com. So we got rid of this long, ugly number. We bought masonco.com. We redirected it through masking through GoDaddy, which is really easy. Um, you just go to godaddy.com, you search your domain name, you select it. I haven't seen more than maybe $2.99 to $13.99 by your domain, depending on which domain you buy. Then you go in, I won't get into all the details. Just call GoDaddy, they'll mask it for you. Um, if you can figure it out on your own, it's pretty simple. You just go to domain and then it'll ask you how to redirect it. But now you can take this, this domain name right here, Mace.co. You can put that on your email signature. Do you want to find out your home value or get your home digest or get your monthly report card on your home? And you can add that into your signature. You can do Facebook ads. You can do Facebook posts. You can post on your LinkedIn, you can have it as your website on your Instagram, if your Instagram is mostly focused on doing uh, real estate, depending if it's personal or real estate. You can send out cool text messages. Hey friends, so it doesn't have to just be your database. 
you can send this out to, like I said, your family back home. Saying, hey, I, I, you know, I have this amazing new technology. You can get a monthly digest or a monthly report in your home. All you have to do is click this link below. You add in your link. It'll auto-populate for them. They go in, and it's all done straight from an iPhone it's, or an Android, straight from a smartphone. It's super easy. They just put in their information. As these people start putting in their information, <coughs> whether it comes from your lead page or it comes from your clients actually referring, we will send you an email letting you know this is a client referral or this is from your lead page. We house them all in their leads. So they'll either say lead page or client referral. I don't have any client referrals in this sample. I should, but I don't. Um, you'll actually know. So for me, we're gonna pretend like Brian um, is one of my client referrals. And let's pretend like you gave it to me. So what was your first name? Nikki. Nikki. So I'd be like, Oh my gosh, Brian, I'm so excited that Nikki gave you this information and you signed up for HomeBot. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. If you guys as real estate agents see something cool, like you have a ton of equity in your property, have you ever considered you know, doing a refinance? Maybe that that's an option for them. Just scroll through their digest and pick out something really cool about their digest and share it with them in the video. Then as an agent, I'm gonna say, Nikki, Nikki, thank you so much for sending Brian my way. That's so awesome. I really value you as a client and really appreciate you for that referral. And send her a gift card to wherever. I don't know. Or send her a nice little note or whatever the case may be. Really use HomeBot as a, another reason to reach out to your clients. And really encourage your clients to use HomeBot as a, refer a referral resource for you. Because I, I know a lot of you guys, you always say like, the best compliment is a referral. I see that on tons of real estate agent signatures as I get them. But how about the best compliment is sharing HomeBot with your friends and family. Share a financial digest for your friends and family and there's, no, there's nothing out of your pocket for it. There's nothing that they have to do to get it. It's a complimentary service that we provide from HomeBot that you guys do have a subscription to, which is super inexpensive, it's $25 a month. And then you can add all of your data, your past database in there, new farm list, and then more people can refer new people. <coughs> um, as you get CMAs, which I was telling you about that in the beginning, that big button, um, when they click on that, you will get a text message and an email. I'm not sure if I said that in the beginning, but you do get a text message and an email, and we house them here. So all of these people I have not given a CMA to, obviously because I'm using this as a sample account, so I haven't gone in here and changed any of them. Um, I think Lizzie, you're the only one that actually yeah. wrote a description. So they can write a description in here and tell me what their upgrades have been, which we discussed. That's a great opportunity to reach out to your clients and have that conversation. Stop by their house, knock on their door, drop off a treat, whatever the case may be. But if you miss a text message or you miss the email, always check in here. We will house every single one of your requests in here for you. Email issues, um, this is great because I have so many real estate agents like, I have a CRM. That's awesome, and you should have CRM. And when you send out your emails through your CRM, does your CRM report back to you when you have an invalid email address or when you have a bounce back? And there's a difference between a bounce back and an invalid. So a bounce back would be for example, Roy. Roy no longer works at Bay Equity. That email address is no longer exists. It's voided. That's called a bounce back. And invalid means a fat finger, meaning you accidentally maybe mistake the I and the A in Gmail, or you put .com instead of .com. There's so many different things, or you spell um, Audrey wrong. I don't know. There, there's a million different scenarios in this case. And most of you should have your clients' phone numbers. I don't have phone numbers in here, but it's a great opportunity to reach out to your clients and say, hey, I saw that your email bounced back to me. Did you get a new job? Congratulations, unless they lost their job, and that would suck. But <laughs> most likely, they got a new job. Um, if it was a, a mistake, like an invalid email address, hey, Audrey, it's actually, you know, I tried to send you this really cool digest, and it came back to me as invalid. Did you get a new email address? Oh, yeah, I did. Or maybe you just accidentally typed in the wrong thing. And if it says unsubscribe, which we only have a 1.5% unsubscribe rate, 
it's another opportunity to say, hey, why'd you unsubscribe? Oh, you bought a new house and didn't use me? That sucks. I'm just kidding. Um, I'm not kidding. That really would suck. But typically, <laughs> the unsubscribes are because they did sell their house, they bought a new house, or um, a lot of the older folks, they when they see the word bought, it does scare them. Um, people think, you know, a lot of the older folks think if you, if they open their email, you automatically have their social security number, which is not true, obviously. Well, I don't know. I'm just, these day and age with systems and intelligence, artificial intelligence, it could be true. But typically, the unsubscribe is because of something where we haven't prepped our clients. We haven't prepped our clients to let them know that we're sending this out to them. So a great way to prep your clients, which we do on our behalf of Humba, or for Humba on behalf of you, is we send them an email. So in this custom email right here, um, maybe I should blow it up a little bit so you guys can read it a little bit better. We send them this email, um, we're excited to let you know. You can customize this any way you want. I always suggest before you send it out to your clients that you add somewhere along these lines, um, the home value is just an estimate, that this is an automated value. There is a button that says, not verified yet. Please click on that button if you feel like this is inaccurate. I will do a CMA complimentary for you. Prepare your clients. It's all about prepping your clients and letting them know what you're sending them, why you're sending it, and how to actually use the tools that are in there. Click on the blue button if you want more information. Click on the pink dot if you want to send me an email. Any way you feel, and each one of you has different clients. Maybe you only work in a, a retirement community. And you know your clients need very clear explanation. Maybe you only work in Desert Ridge and the home values are kind of crazy out there because all the new builds and all the things are happening. Just constantly preparing your clients for what you're sending them, your unsubscribe rate will be very, very low. I can guarantee you that. And that's with anything. So you can enter your clients into the information already. Yeah, so um, when you sign up for HomeBot, what will initially happen is you can pull your clients from your database. So if you guys have a CRM that you're currently using right now, you would just export it into an Excel file and then convert it into a CSV. If you're not familiar with what a CSV is, it's really simple. You go to export to Excel, save as, there'll be a drop down right hand side, it'll say CSV, click on it almost exactly like an Excel file. It's just converted a little bit differently so we can upload it. If you are really, really not familiar and you're really not tech savvy, that's okay too. We have a team um, that can actually walk you through it. They can't export it for you. We can we cannot go into your database on your CRM and export it for you, but we can help you and walk you through it. And then once you export it, we can actually upload it for you if you um, are not sure how to do that. And then once they're in there, we will automatically send in this email. If you do not decide to customize it, this is what they get. If you want to customize it, do it before we upload your database. So then when it starts going out, this is what they will get. Do you have a, like a welcome video that would explain how it works? We do. Okay. However, we do not send that out to your clients. Yeah. You can send that out on um, your behalf and it is on our YouTube channel and it's called What Does Homebot for Buyers? Did you know that 83% of the African American's wealth at retirement actually comes from home equity and not other investments? This means that making smart home finance decisions over the life cycle of home ownership is the key to building long-term wealth. But how can you ensure that you're truly making the right decisions at the right time? Introducing HomeBot, a personalized dashboard that helps homeowners like you build wealth by making smart and timely home finance decisions. Every month, HomeBot automatically sends an easy to read home digest that tracks your home value, your loans, your equity, and your local real estate market conditions. HomeBot provides information like when to remodel, when to refinance, when to buy, and when to sell. Kind of like a report card for your home. HomeBot even helps you calculate the financial impact of a short-term rental on Airbnb. U.S. homeowners leave over $100 billion of wealth on the table each year by making poor home finance decisions. And the constant fluctuation of real estate markets make it challenging to know what decisions to make and when you should make them. That's why HomeBot makes decisions simple, customizing the experience to your market and exact situation, empowering you with the intelligence you need to save money and build wealth. 
Wondering how much it costs? Thanks to your local real estate agent or lender, HomeBot is 100% free to homeowners. You can even share it with your friends, family, and social sphere. Make <coughs> your home finance decisions with HomeBot. Helping homeowners maximize their wealth. That's the video. Short, two minutes, simple, explains everything to them. If you have a CRM, you can drop that video in your CRM prior to uploading your database, send it out through your CRM, letting them know that they are actually going to be receiving their HomeBot. Once they, you send that out, then you can actually send out our HomeBot, they'll get this letter, and then they'll get their digest. If that answers your question. Yeah. Okay. Can you use it for your to purchase? Investors are looking for a home, considering uh, yeah. Airbnb, so. Absolutely, so I was gonna show you that platform. Liz, did you have a question on this part? Oh, no, okay. I was gonna give a great shout out to how our experience is better than kind of some real life stuff that we dealt with. Oh yeah, okay. it's, yeah. it's super cool. I'd love for you to give a testimony. I'm gonna answer yeah. that question real quick. So if you guys have any prospects or you're farming in the area, so I'm gonna be very, very clear on farming in area. That doesn't mean you go to your local title rep and she gives you a list of all the homes in Desert Ridge and you just blast them. That means you go to your local area that you probably live in, that you're familiar in, maybe you hold a community event, maybe you're part of the PTA, maybe you run um, the, some sort of charity in that area, you've been sending flyers to them for 12 to 18 months, they know you. They know your face, they're familiar with your name. Even if they don't know you specifically, they've seen you before, they're familiar. Absolutely upload those people in there because they are actually going to understand that it's coming from you, they'll recognize your face. If you're just pulling a list and you're dropping them in there, I can 100% guarantee you that 50% of them will unsubscribe. That's like somebody knocking on your door that you don't know. 50% of the time they're gonna answer. Don't send people that you don't know HomeBot unless you know that they have some sort of familiarity with you. Um, if you do do it, that's all you. And I mean, it's like, I hope you win. You know, the spray and hope. Um, I suggest if you do a bulk upload, you work with your local lender, maybe I'm assuming a lot of you guys work with your lender doing postcards or farming in area or community events, work with them, put your people in there. They'll put some of their prospects, you'll put some of your prospects in here, you'll put their financial information in here, and then you'll send them. Once you send it to them, they're gonna get a similar email and they can actually start, as I showed you before, checking the market. So we can put this, uh, that's not what I want. We can put in our price point in there. Um, so we'll put 500, put that price point in there. So at this point, Natalie, I've been working with Natalie. She came from Facebook lead or ad. Every time Natalie comes in here and she explores the market or chooses a code, like I said before, I will get notified. So I will contact Natalie. Natalie had picked um, 85253. I see there's, holy cow, 65 homes in that inventory. Hey Natalie, <coughs> I saw that you picked 85253. Guess what, girlfriend, it's out of your price range. Because I'm pretty sure the average home says 1.2 right there. Now it's only approved for 500. So you can really create different types of conversations. You know what, Natalie, 85258 is great. It's in your price range. Um, it's got the bedrooms and the baths you're looking for, price per square foot, 29 homes in the inventory. Let's go ahead and pull those homes out of the inventory. I will email them to you or put you on an MLS uh, drip or I, I don't know how you guys refer to it, not a drip, but a, 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 a search engine where every single, every time a home comes up in that area, they will get a new notification. Um, now for whose question was about the investor? Yours, so anytime a client inquires about anything, they can type in any address they'd like across the entire United States and pull data on it. So if you do have investors that are looking to rent or to purchase a home that they want to potentially, this is not a monthly rental. So it doesn't give you the finance on a monthly rental. It gives you the Airbnb, VRBO information. So as far as like, if they're gonna rent it for a year long, they might be able to take a bit of this data and implement it, but um, this is more for the actual short-term rental. I see somebody that have a question. Okay, um, shows their purchasing power as the market's fluctuating. Uh, this part I actually really, really like. I'm not a real estate agent, um, but I think this is cool. So if I'm a client, I'm a consumer, and I'm going, okay, I wanna look in 
um, this area, my lease is up, let's just say um, the 23rd, that means I need to be in my prepared, where it says preparing. You can change these numbers too. See where it says prepared three days. If you're an agent, it only takes you one day to put together a contract and get it submitted, you can change it to one day. If you're an agent that takes you five days, then you can change it to five days. If you know that your lender does not take up to 45 days, because we faulted at 45 days as a default, you can change it to 30 days, have that conversation with your lender. Um, if you know for a fact they can do it at 20, by all means, change it to 20. The only thing you cannot change is where it says search and bid. That is strictly based upon the actual market in that zip code. How quickly homes are turning over in that zip code. <coughs> so once you have those numbers adjusted to where you want to be, uh, <coughs> Natalie's looking at 031, her lease is up April 23rd. That means she should actually be right now probably looking, preparing to go out with you guys. So that means we should probably already be sending your MLS listing. She should probably have homes picked out. Um, by February 8th, which is Friday, you guys should start looking. That's gonna give you 28 days or 20, it's really small on my screen, so 29 days to actually go out and start looking. And hopefully within that 29 days, they find something because by March 9th, they need to found something, they need to be in contract, and they need to be a close table based upon a 45 day close. So this really puts your clients into check. It's no longer you or you telling them where they need to be, this is a system that's saying, this is exactly where you should be. When they start looking at this timeline, they're going, shoot. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I really need to be by March 9th. Like, I really need, like, I need to find a home. And it might freak some of them out. It might feel a little pressure, but it also might encourage them to move just a little bit, a little bit faster. Or it might encourage them to maybe reconsider another area. Because when they go in here, um, oops, sorry. They can search. You know, I really need the fastest move. I gotta get out of this place. I've gotta move, my lease is up, my landlord's selling their house. I gotta go, and you go, well, you can move to uh, South Maui if you wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's in your price range, but there's only one home. So hopefully you'll see like it. So they can move to Rio Verde. Actually, yeah. How, how accurate is that market data that's connected? It's pulled from the MLS. It's pulled, so okay, it's, okay. yeah, it's continuously okay, updating. Cool. Uh, they can be cheaper buy, bigger home, obviously popular market. So as they're going through, they can search. We do not want to give them access to the MLS because that's your guys' job. Just to help them find the home that best fits them. We're just giving them enough information and helping them understand their position. And then from there, as you guys are tracking your clients, your potential buyers and where they are and what zip codes they're looking in, then you can reach out to them. Um, I'm trying to think of any other things. I mean, I could go into a whole marketing platform with you and how to market HomeBot, but since most of you don't have HomeBot yet, um, once you do get it, I teach a bunch of classes on, because um, I do have a background in marketing on how to market it on social, how to reach out to clients, how to create ads, how to implement it really in your daily business. When I say daily business, that means every single day when you pick up your phone to check your emails, your Instagram, your Facebook, you're checking your home bot. You're going into your activity. You're looking to see how many times Madison is logged in. Madison's logged in three times, great. Then you're going down, you're going, oh my gosh, Madison's, oh, this is her new home. So she just logged in. So she's brand new, that's her new home. Um, yes. Yeah. Yeah, so um, for those of you that don't know, I'm Liz Romanski. I work with VIP Mortgage with the Copper team, and we signed up for HomeBot for our clients about three months ago. Um, and since then, we put a lot of our best agent partners that we sponsor on HomeBot because we really saw the value with our clients. And it's hard to kind of tell in a demo account, so that's mm -hmm. why I wanted to interrupt Ashley. Sorry, but like this is our You can plug in here. Data. Do you want to plug in? Well, I probably shouldn't share it because it's like oh. our specific. That's but um, so in the past 30 days, we've sent out 1,169 home bot digests, 1,133 email opens, which is insane. So look at that number. And then uh, digest views, 762. So that's almost a 70% click-through rate, not just an open rate, yeah. click-through rate. And I've been um, on the marketing side of this business 
yeah, for like eight years, and the industry standard is 20% or less for email open rates. Um, but what we have seen from our team is that people really value this information. Um, and I think it's good that it doesn't come directly from us. So what you see from your CRM, if you send emails regularly to people, they start to tune them out. But because this comes from HomeBot with all of our branding, obviously, so it's branded to you throughout the whole report, um, it's something different that they pay attention to and because they see value in the information, they keep opening it. And we've had, the first month, we probably had 30 people contact us with questions about either you know, refi or equity positions, HELOCs, whatever it is. Um, we got three CMAs this month alone. I think total we've had like 12 people that have contacted us for it. Um, but what we really find is that more than anything, we're getting people writing back and saying, we love this, this is such an awesome report, we really find value in it. And that's the most important thing for us. Because we, we do, same thing on the lending side, just like you guys, we want to be their resource forever. So, um, it, I love it. And I, when I first met a bachelor, I was totally skeptical of this. Like, it's, you know, like anything. Right, yeah. Yeah, and I put myself in there. I remember in the demo, mm -hmm. I'm like, put my house in. I want to see. And the data is accurate. It's correct. Of all the people we put in there, there was only one person who had a problem with the data. And what we realized is that it was because it was recorded wrong. Right. So Maricopa County Recorder had recorded their house address incorrectly. That's nothing. It wasn't the data's problem. It was that it was recorded wrong. Um, but we've seen some amazing stuff with it already. It's a, a definitely a value for our clients and for our agent partners. It's been a value too. Um, I actually got a video from Andrew Glenn, who we sponsor on here, that he sent his first report out to less than 100 people and he got three listing appointments out of it. That's insane. So, yeah. because what would we find in this industry is people really don't have any idea how much value they have in their property. Um, so this really breaks it down in a way that's really easy for them to understand and because it's color coded, it's very clean and helpful. Um, and on our end, it, it helps too because when you go into your clients, um, let's see here, you basically, it, it color codes them right away. Oh yeah, I didn't show that yet. Yeah, like right. like, so I, we can scan through all of our past clients and it's either green or red if they have equity or don't. So green is equity, yeah. um, red is no, and white is they're a tweener. Um, this is a great opportunity too. If you love your lender and you're working with them closely and you put all your data in here and you categorize your clients by their rate, how much equity they have, how awesome would it be to go to your lender and say, hey lender, you know what? I have this client named Brian. He owns this home um, in Prescott. He's got a ton of equity and has a really high interest rate. Let's work them together. Maybe they're looking to sell their home. I'm gonna assume that they have 88% equity because they are selling their home. Um, and then you guys can work together and reach out to that client. If they are just those people that have owned their home in Prescott for a million years and they don't care and they're paying it off, fine. But it gives you opportunity to really partner with your lenders that you know, like, and love and create value to your clients because they're gonna remember you. They're gonna remember that conversation they had with you and your lender. People are thrilled when you can see right. money. I mean, we have, what we love on the lending side, and you guys will love it too, is like she said, when it's, there's three triggers of emails that go out automatically to them that don't go out for on every month. But if they fall in one of the three trigger positions, they get an email. So if their equity changes significantly that month due to a recent comp in the neighborhood, it sends them an email and says, congratulations, your home value has gone up this month. Um, also, if they're paid down their mortgage enough to drop their mortgage insurance, it sends them an email and said, hey, did you know you could save you know, 200 bucks a month if you drop your mortgage insurance? Um, and same thing about refining. It, it automatically sends them an email if they're in a position where if they refi it, it would make sense. If, it, if it's all green. Yes, if it would save mm -hmm. them long term. Yeah. Um, and those have been great too, I think, because obviously you know people are thrilled if you can help right. them save money for the long term, they love it. So um, it's, it's been awesome, we, we love it, I think it's great, yeah. And another question, Mario, to kind of answer your question, even if you partner with a the lender, they can't see your whole database. Oh yeah, no. They so can't. like, we, we only see when a client clicks on a button asking a question about any sort of financial information. But right. we can't go in and like mine your database and start calling your people, that wouldn't be fair. And we can't either from yeah. HomeBot, we have a disclaimer in there. Once you give us your database, it's your database, if you leave HomeBot, they're yours. We will never send anything to any of your clients if you do not have a subscription with us. 
even if your clients call us and say, oh my gosh, I was getting home by, and now I'm not getting it, we're gonna tell them, I'm so sorry, you have to find another agent or a vendor to, to deliver this information to you, because we cannot send it. And I loved what you said too, was about, um, you know, we become so immune, so yeah. as consumers yourself, consumers, we are consumers, we, we get emails all the time from different companies that we sign up for, Amazon, Google, um, Tory Burch, if you're me, <laughs> uh, so you get all these things, and eventually you just become immune. And you're like, ugh, and, and I start to just believing them. That's what's happening. We have to think, we have to put ourselves in our actual homeowner's shoes and say, okay, I'm a homeowner, what would I want to get? Do I wanna get where all the splash pads are? Maybe five points. I don't know, but how do you how do you know? How do you go in your CRM and say, okay, these are my clients that kids, I'm only gonna send them this? You're not doing it. You're just sending the same things out continuously. Even with your holiday cards, how do you know which one of your clients participate in which holidays? You don't know. If you were to close your eyes and put yourself in your client's position, what would you want to receive every single month? Financial information. About your house, about your house, about the market. Not about the market, not about the neighborhood. Yeah, I'm curious about what my neighbor sold my, the house for, but whatever, I can pull that up. I don't really care what my neighbors are selling their house for. I, I care about where my house is positioned based upon what's happening, and that's what we deliver. So this system knows if homes are selling in your neighborhood. Granted, if a home sells last week, it's not going to be updated right away because we still have to go through the process. So when a home sells, and it goes to the county recorders and it has to deliver, there's gonna be a timeline, 30 to 60 days before it actually updates, depending on how quickly it gets updated. Um, but eventually the home will be updated based upon the market. So if we're continuously putting ourselves in our client's position and understanding what we would want to get from our real estate agent and our lender, this is definitely something that your clients would wanna get. For no years, I told agents, you know, send people an RPR report of their home value twice a year. That and that's such a manual process oh my for gosh, the same so information. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's that's what I love. This it's worth the money to not have to spend however many hours <laughs> running all the RPR reports, reports and printing them and mailing them. You know, it's a lot of work. So this yeah. has been awesome. It's definitely a great tool. Um, and for honestly, I, I just reiterate the cost for the cost of it. It's next to nothing. And then when you spot me, you know, you're sponsored by an awesome lender, whether you guys um, work with BHP Mortgage or you work with somebody else that is your go-to person, to be able to close that loop between you, your lender, and your consumer and provide that information with them, just builds that relationship even stronger than it was before, for sure. And, and now they can give you, you know, <coughs> referrals and leads as well as you can give them referrals and leads. And, and that's what it's all about, is just working together as a team and helping your consumers, you know, inspiring them, educating them, and empowering them to make better financial decisions on their home, so. And then it's like clients can refer their yeah. Of, yeah. yeah. So when I use the word inspiring, yeah. to me that means like you're inspiring them to get excited, they get excited and they want to give that to their friends and family as well. Um, and again, across the entire United States. So if any of you guys, I know a lot of Arizonians are in plants, um, I am not, I'm born and raised here, but if you are, take yeah. this opportunity <laughs> to share it with your sphere outside of Arizona, for sure. So, that's a wrap. Awesome. Any other so questions? Um, absolutely. So, you can just go to homebot.ai. Okay. And um, if you guys are interested, I, I'll take your cards and I can email you the link. And also, for attending the class, I will waive your guys' sign up fee. So, homebot.ai. So, for attending, there typically is a sign up fee, but if you guys are interested for attending the class, I'll waive your sign up fee. I don't need your information, so I can send you an email with a link to waive your sign up fee.
That's okay. Oh, okay. So anybody that's on this list too? Oh, okay. Yeah, no, that's okay. If your name, if your name is on this list, I will email you with a coupon code. If your name's not on this list, I'll give you your business card.
So how, like, at the end of the day, that's if I can bring in somebody under me and take ten thousand off them, and I don't care what the board chooses. That's because that's what I'm saying. Making it look as good as possible. You, you can also um, put them here and say, "Hey, pause it real quick. I want to add it awesome. in my email." That's what I'm going to do. Yeah. Just watch the video and not go yeah. over yeah. and share this. So when you so let's say you're from Hunter, like, we're not going to send all Hunter out one day. We're going to send out this first because we will get a lot of inquiries and we don't want to overwhelm anybody else. So you send us 100, we might send out 14, we might send out 20, just so they're not all going out first, they're all in 15. That's what we're encouraging them to do. We want them to know, like, not verify yet. Want to verify this? Like, there's two spots. Like, we want to encourage them to verify this information, so we do not have their own information. So either we haven't, most likely we just haven't been able to obtain all of the data. That's assuming based on their address, based on their equity and their position that we that we know. Um, because right now it's not showing that they have a current mortgage. We'll be around. Yeah, I'll get in touch. Assuming that they're equity. I mean, we're all still on boxer, I guess. We're still on boxer? I'm not a part of the group anymore. Is that their equity is 6.9? It thinks that their home's paid off. So how can I go and get those? What does that mean? Well, you can contact. Oh, you're leaving. When they bought it, what they bought it for, what the interest rate was, and you just go in here. Okay. Um, the date they started, Got how much loan was for, and their interest rate. And then this will change everything. This will all change for Jeffrey. Um, when did they buy this house? Yeah. So we just we have it. So they probably looked at this and like, oh, uh, no, because it'll let them know. Do you have any loans? And they'll say, oh. So we we research public records and we have come up empty. That means that there. Has not at some point exactly. there's a loss and oh very much completely yeah. but title so can still pull that yeah title can pull it um, that just means that we somehow in yeah. some portion of the transaction that we are not able to pull for financial data which we can do that so yeah. in these cases um, so, uh, another question I have is for Barbara from New Jersey mm -hmm. we have a new center here this year right. and Everybody's my friend, and then they come in and I'm like, who are you? <laughs> <laughs> so let's be fair. Oh gosh, it didn't used to be, but now anymore. Right. She, she, she has no bank records. First. December 1st, mm -hmm. she bought a house. Yeah, call um, title. So we are able to pull financial records. She paid cash. So she's not even worth watching. So she doesn't have an institution that she's she registered. Like, I still pull title. So somebody starts a topic and then just starts banter with producers in the room, new people in the room, that's popular. So that's a good class. I just remember what else. No, no, no. I just want to ask a question. Obviously. Um, the biggest thing that stuck out, stuck out to me was it automatically sent. But then I just cleaning crew will have their hands full tonight. Oh, you, that's right. You said you clicked that. Okay. Yeah. Email issues. Oh, none. Yeah. Oh, maybe only sent out seven. So. Right. I'm not putting everyone in there because I just wanted to test it. So these are my daily people. 
actually you want a copy of this? Yes, please. They all want me to send them um, a coupon code. Cool. Okay, cool. So and then are you partnered with the library? Yeah, I'll send these. I love Austin. He's like, I don't know how to explain my data. Why is he a pain in the ass? Because he could not figure out how to export his data. So then I had to call Kevin Barella. I'm like, Kevin, can you help him export his data? And he imported his data. Kevin is like his, um, Kevin would be like his, assist, not assistant. Um, like home bot person? No, not home bot person. He okay. would be his uh, marketing person. Okay. But that doesn't work for VAP, that he pays outside of VAP to help him organize data, he can help with his data, keep his data clean. Yeah. It's basically like his data like manager. Yeah. So then Kevin called me and he's like, Austin doesn't know how to do it. Like, let's do this, let's do this. So, uh, thank you. It was really funny because it took him like two weeks to get signed up. And not just you, but there's like a ton of agents like waiting in line to sign up with them. Right. And so I'm like, Austin, like your clients are calling me asking when you're going to sign up. Yes, so you so need to sign up. That's so funny. He said, yeah. I texted him. He goes, yeah, I'm going to sign up for home bot. He's like, yeah, I've heard of it. Um, and they said, I'll check with Ashley. So that's you. Mm -hmm. OK, I didn't know. I was like, whatever. I don't know who Ashley is. So I'm right. Yeah. OK, so that's you. So um, I had met with him. Because he had another agent. I just wanted to make sure that he could sponsor him. He can. Yeah. So he, and he's not paying me. Like I'm paying $25 for it. He pays for agent. Yeah, he's paying for it, 25 bucks. It's rest of the flight. He also pays $25? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so he's paying $25 for you, and okay. you pay your $25. We, yeah, we have to have that balance. Okay. So really, uh, loan officers have their own fee that they have to pay. Um, and then as a sponsoring agent, they have to pay for us to put their payroll database and their information in front of all of the agents so they pay. Um, the more agents they sponsor, we do give them a give back a little bit as much as we can through all the compliance issues and part of the FILA. Um, but yeah, they have to pay their own. But they have a lot. They have more perks. They have more perks as a financial, you know, being a financial position. Like they get to add more data in there. They get to be part of more clients. Um, all the financial stuff is directly towards them. So they get charged a little bit more. But Austin's a great person to be partnered with. He's yeah. a freaking rock star. I've known him for a really long time, and he's just he, a solid guy. He shows a lot of commitment, so. He does, and when he's committed, he's committed. Absolutely. He's for sure. For sure. All right, thanks, Ashley. You're welcome. Yeah, should I actually have a suggestion? I love suggestions, actually. And you're from marketing, so you get it. Because mm -hmm. uh, I had a conversation, and it's just so funny you guys were doing a presentation here, because I found out about home bond, right? Oh, okay. I don't know how I found out about it, but I was looking at it and I was like, man, this is just legit for keeping in touch with people yeah. over time. But a suggestion I had to, I think her name is Nina. That's what Nina, yeah. Nina. Was that sending cold traffic to it, probably, because you guys have that one page you can share with anybody where they put their info and shows the slides. And my suggestion to her, and so maybe you can just play this out. I will is asking for less information on that site. So like, let's say you had a site, my home value 